know, just like anything, the Southern California fishery has always evolved and it's evolved over the years. And there have been certain innovations that I've seen in my lifetime that have completely changed the way we fish. If you grew up in San Diego, you started off chasing calico bass in the kelp beds. You graduated to yellowtail, kelp beds, Coronado Islands right out here behind us. And then eventually you started chasing albacore. Now that fishery would repeat itself over and over again to different degrees over the next almost 20 years, you know, since the albacore arrived until the time that everything changed. Spin the clock back to about 2015, we had this massive El Nino. It's the largest El Nino that has ever been on record. The El Nino was just a one year event, but the effects from the El Nino, at least in my belief, have been lingering. And probably most notably, those effects have been the emergence of the bluefin tuna fishery here. We know that these same grade of fish were in our waters from about 1908 to like 1920. The cycle lasted about 12 years. It's well documented with the IGFA, the Avalon Tuna Club. And I could never get my head around like, gosh, was it pollution? Like, where did these fish go? Did we do something to scare them off? I could never imagine a hundred year cycle, but here we are right in the midst of it and our fishery has changed forever. We have made more fishermen. We've changed the way we fish. We've changed the boats that we fish. We've changed the power that we fish on. Now we've got the big center consoles and even bigger walk around boats in 30 plus foot category. And the heartbeat of those boats is the power. And thanks to these outboards, you can go as far as you want for the most part safely. And it's just that reliability and the confidence to chase what's over the horizon. Now there's a whole emergence of these younger charter captains that are really doing things at a very, very high level from a much smaller vessel than ever. One of these young charter captains has come into the fishery and quickly built a name for himself. Not only is he a great fisherman, but his personal story is an inspiration as well. That kid is Brandon Nelson. My name is Brandon Nelson, 28 years old, from San Diego, California. I own and operate Lucky Bee Sport Fishing. Kind of the name Lucky Bee started back in high school from just, man, this kid's lucky. He's always catching fish. He's always out on the water. I built Lucky Bee Sport Fishing around giving our customers the best opportunity day in and day out, whether that's 30 miles from San Diego or 130 miles from San Diego. We're gonna go where the weather allows us and where the fish are biting on a daily basis. And in doing so, we need a fast boat and that's what we have. We run uh, yellowfin center consoles. We have a 36 foot yellowfin with triple 300 burrados and a 32 foot yellowfin with uh, twin 350 burrados. <laughs> 2020 was a, a very different year for a lot of us and for me especially so. I had really bad night sweats. Like I couldn't sleep for like two months and I went to the doctors. We'll put you on some antibiotics. We don't know what's wrong. Another month goes on, I'm like, dude, there's something wrong. Like, I, something's really wrong. He's like, all right, let's do an x-ray of your chest. Does the x-ray, he's like, you need to go get a CT scan like yesterday. They actually called me. They're like, this, like, we wouldn't usually say this or we wouldn't usually do this over the phone, but it can't wait you uh, have some sort of uh, blood cancer and we need to start treatment right away. Sat in the car for a little bit and was like, hadn't told my girlfriend, hadn't told my mom or dad, just sat in the car there, was just kind of analyzing what, what had just happened. I was diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma I had four tumors, um, anywhere from the size of a peach to a small football in my chest. 
I mean, you go from being completely healthy or feeling fine to, wow, you have, you, if this goes untreated, you could die in who knows how long, six months, a year. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, very emotional, but we got to do whatever it takes. I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever options there are, we're going to utilize them. Day one was, I think, January 17th. I was admitted into the hospital, and a week later, I had my first chemo treatment. Each treatment was about a four to six hour process, and that happened every two weeks for six months. My doctor, thankfully, had informed me to the point where if, if we do everything right, then we're getting over the hill. After four treatments, we did the first scan and the largest tumor had shrunk almost half and was showing no signs of the cancer. That probably was the biggest point in my kind of journey during this time where it's like, I just did four rounds of chemo and this is, this is working. Like, this is working. I mean, obviously, emotional crying, everything with family and everything, but just a sense of relief, like, wow. This, this, this is happening, but I'm overcoming this. At the end of the day, they're like, you did it. You beat this thing, and um, just, it has a very slim likelihood of coming back, but obviously there's always a chance, but you're, you're free to go live your life. Actually, we went fishing the day after that. Oh, hey, what's happening? See the way I walk, I'm a bad man. I'm the major, I'm the general and captain. No hard, I can see it in your cat scan. Oh, man, someone tell him I'm a savage and a monster. And I don't really care. I don't want to talk. I just make them disappear. Ah, hush your mouth when I come around. Shut your mouth. Make one more move and we gon' run them down. Caught a blue fin with no hair. 100 pounds, just pulling on a blue fin. It was, it was sad, but awesome at the same time. So it's cool. Getting the cancer-free diagnosis left me with the, the mindset of, let's do this. Let's, let's get into the fishery, let's grind, let's, let's catch fish. Let's provide those experiences that we've been having as a family, as a crew for the last 10 years. Let's share that with these other people out here that that maybe not be as fortunate to experience what we get to see out there. So we bought a boat and we started Lucky Bee Sport Fishing in 2020. Challenging conditions today, but last few days actually, but we uh, stuck with it and we got a nice, on a nice kelp, some biting yellows. Hard to beat it. In terms of life-changing experiences, I mean, there isn't a, a greater one, I think. I mean, being faced with imminent death yeah. changes you. In, in many ways, um, changes your mentality on life, changes how you look at others, changes um, just how you see the world in general. I can thankfully and gratefully say that I've been cancer free two years now. There's no guarantees. We only have a finite amount of time with the people we love, our friends and family. <laughs> Do what you want with who you want and, and cherish every day. Three times well, it's told to clearly say, my treatment's done, this course is run, and I'm on my way. <laughs>